I am surrounded by yarn. <laughs> My name is Carmen and this is my second ever Wooly Goodies video. My first Wooly Goodies video I think I recorded around Christmas time where I got a huge amount of yarn. And this Wooly Goodies video will be all about the things that I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Fest. I went to Edinburgh Yarn Fest for the very first time which was uh, last week uh, in March 2019. Um, and it was amazing. I have a separate Edinburgh Yarn Fest vlog, so go over and see that. Um, this video is all about what I bought. Um, I'll accept one thing because there was one thing that I got before Edinburgh Yarn Fest and I wanted to show you as well because it is super cute. Um, so I had made the kind of a vow to myself to not buy yarn until Edinburgh Yarn Fest. I had bought some yarn, I think in the first week of January from Twisted Limon. And uh, afterwards I said, okay, that will be my last yarn purchase until Edinburgh Yarn Fest. Um, and I lasted until Edinburgh Yarn Fest to buy yarn. So that was a win. I did buy some stitch markers. So I got a set of stitch markers from Ingrid, who is Le Kumat on Etsy and on Instagram. And uh, she packaged them so cute. So this is a crochet heart and a little heart stitch marker uh, that she added onto this cute little bag. So cute. Thank you, Ingrid. Um, and also she wrote me the most lovely card. So that was really nice. So let me show you which stitch markers I have. I have some tea as well, pear caramel. Um, this is her card. Le Kumacht. It means nicely made, actually. Le Um, Handmade bags and other goodies by Ingrid. Um, yeah, she has project bags as well. So go and check those out. They are really, really well made. And so I got a set of three stitch markers. One is a coffee cup. <laughs> I can hardly show you. So small. Can you see? It says coffee. <laughs> it simply says coffee. And I got a slice of rainbow cake as well. Rainbow cake. And what I was most excited about, instant noodles. Instant noodle progress keeper. This is amazing, especially because uh, I'm not sure if you will recognize this. So these noodles are from the um, Chinese brand Kang Shifu, which means something like um, healthy master. And they are the uh, beef noodles and they are my favorite instant noodles ever. <laughs> and I ate them all the time when I was in China. And it was just so funny to see that that Ingrid had made a progress keeper out of this. I don't even know where she found this charm. It's amazing. And she had some other um, some other noodles as well. Um, also the Shin Ramyun from Nongshim, I think. Uh, so a lot of you will know that one. But I had to get the Kang Shufu noodles because they are my favorite. And I haven't had them in a while because they don't sell them a lot here in the Netherlands but they do sell them at Amer Amazing Oriental so I need to visit <laughs> I need to visit that store some more time um sometime and get some more noodles because yeah so yeah <laughs> I'm all about quirky stitch markers and these are amazing and 
so Ingrid has gifted me another set um, for one of you guys and uh, so should I open it? I think I should open it really carefully just to show you which noodles are inside so it there um, there's also a coffee cup and a rainbow cake and of course it's cute packaging but oh yeah they're still packaged up like Ingrid is so so thoughtful and so careful with her packaging I've had some stitch markers, um, some progress keepers break in the mail, so yeah, this is really cool that she does this. I'm just gonna try if I can... I'll put it back, I'll put it back. But just so you know, so there is a coffee cup and the rainbow cake, which is the same as the one I got, and then these noodles. And what's the brand? I think it's Samyang. I think it's Samyang. So Korean noodles. Um, I think. Yeah, so I don't know these ones myself, but they're still <laughs> super cute. And maybe they'll have these at Amazing Oriental. I must go find these noodles. <laughs> anyway, so I am allowed to gift these to you, one of you guys in an upcoming giveaway so these will go into the podcast prize basket <laughs> and for a future giveaway so thank you so much Ingrid that's really really nice of you and just package this up nicely again there okay all right the Edinburgh Yarn Fest purchases. So, um, as I said, I hadn't bought yarn in a long time just so I could go all out on Edinburgh Yarn Fest. Having said that, it was still very difficult to make a decision at the booths because there was just so much to choose from and I did not really have any projects in mind. Well, I had some projects in mind, but, um, I try not to plan too many projects ahead because I know that I can only knit so much at a time and if I really start to plan things then there will always be patterns that are like newly published or just projects that come along that I just want to make and then if I already have this planned list of things that I want to make and that I already have yarned for. It kind of puts this pressure on me that I don't really want. So um, I decided to not plan any projects and just, um, just, buy yarn, just buy yarn. And usually when I see the yarn, um, it kind of, it's, uh, it's weird to describe it, but kind of when I see the yarn, I know what I want to make with it. So for me, it's kind of the other way around. I don't, uh, I don't necessarily want to make a project and then go find the yarn. I usually buy the yarn and then find out what it wants to be. Um, yes. Yeah, so what did I buy first? I think I went over. No, no, no. This was my first purchase. Yeah. So I had seen these bags on Instagram and they are by the Blue Rabbit House which I believe is a maker from Belgium or the Netherlands uh, and they were sold at Cross and Woods which is a Dutch craft store look at it it is <laughs> it's so cute it's so cute it's a sheep with flowers so yeah I was born in the Chinese year of the sheep and I love flowers so I felt that this bag was made for me. <laughs> the inside is plain brown. There is a tag there which says the Blue Rabbit House exclusively for cross and woods. 
and she had made or she had uh, designed a couple of other bags as well a red one with swans um a blue one with a polar bear and another um natural one with a ram on it and one with a bear and they were all so cute and i'm so happy that i got one i got the last one available for thursday and we were only inside for like 10 minutes so they went really fast um so um i i gather that they would have more bags available uh throughout the days um but yeah i was happy that i got one on thursday so this was my very first purchase and afterwards i went to la bien Aimée because um that was the other one really high up my list and i knew i wanted the shade um the colorway peanut butter jelly right peanut butter peanut butter and jelly and they have a peanut butter jelly fade that was really pretty uh but it turned out that they didn't have it but they did have peanut butter jelly so uh and there was a huge line um by the way i really had to queue to get to the booth but luckily i had brought my very tall boyfriend and he was um he was saying to me like okay what what color what color do you want and i said purple so he would look um he would look where the purple was because i couldn't see for all the people were there and um and then he he told me where i should uh try to try to make my way to the booth uh so i got the peanut butter jelly it is the merino singles And as you can see, it's different shades of purple with uh, some orange, some yellow, some pink. Really, really pretty. Love it. And uh, kind of next to it was this color. Um, it's called Tickle and it's all kinds of pastel. And then some neon yellow and green. Um, yeah, just this... Um, it seemed like a really fun colorway and it seemed to go with peanut butter jelly and so i'm going to share some of my um, project ideas uh, for these as well so i already had two skeins of la bien Aimé here at home these are dusk and romance and these go really well together and i wanted to make a shawl with them but with two skeins um should be able to make a large shawl but uh, just in case i yeah i just thought these would go these might go well so let's see maybe in this order what do you think i think it might be good yeah so I was thinking The Dotted Rays by Stephen West, but if you have any other suggestions, I am open to them. I also have the Exploration Station pattern, but yeah, just let me know because I want to knit a shawl with this. Or the Spectre, might that work? It might work I don't know I don't know so let me know if you have any ideas uh, so those were my purchases at La Bien Aimé what did I buy next yeah I went to Yawol uh, which is a Dutch uh, yarn store um, Yawol Rotterdam so they are based in Rotterdam um, and I actually, I went there for this needle case and I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up for you because it's easier to see. They are so pretty. These are made by Erica Eccles and they are oh, just beautiful. Look at this. 
so beautiful. I own a needle case by Hey Mama Wolf, uh, but that's really, um, it's really good for my interchangeable needles. But these are really good for my fixed circulars because it's a little bit longer and uh, so I can fit the cable in there as well. And some scissors. Um, yeah, so there are more pockets here. Yeah, I just really like this. So I've just put my most used uh, needles in here and I, uh, I used it on the trip already. Um, yeah, just really, really helpful because I didn't have a needle case yet for this. Um, you can close it like this and then you can tie it with the velvet ribbon. So uh, this needle case was called the Little Saskia um, and is made by Erica Eccles and is sold by Yawol Hotram. And at the same booth, oops, at the same booth, I got some Skippy yarn and um, Skippy yarn is hand dyed by the daughter of one of the employees uh, of Yawol Hotram, I think. Um, I know, well, it's dyed by Silver, who I think is the daughter of, and she's nine or ten years old, and yeah, so she has her own yarn brand called Skippy, and uh, it's hand dyed uh, Ludlopy wool. And of course I had to get the pink yarn. Yeah, so pretty. Um, and where is the pattern? They gave me a pattern with the yarn. So the idea of Skippy yarn is that you can combine it with a solid color uh, Ludlopy yarn. Um, yeah, so I think here the green one is hand dyed and the gray one is uh, one of the standard colors and same goes here. Yeah. So that's really nice. I really like the idea of combining a hand dyed yarn with uh, a regular um, mass dyed yarn as an accent in a sweater or an, an accessory. Um, yeah, so not sure yet where I'm gonna use what I'm gonna use this for but I do have some let lopi and I was going to knit a bobble hat uh, so um, the hat with the color worksheet and if I do this as the sky it will be like a really beautiful sunset sky so I might do that um, or I will use it in a yoke probably yeah but I love it. I love it. So Skippy Yarn. Check her out. She's also on the website of Yawol. Then I went to Isolde's booth. So Isolde Teague. She has a yarn shop and she had an amazing booth. Um, they, um, they didn't only have yarn. They also had uh, books on uh, gender and racism. Uh, which was all, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's great that they do that, that they use their platform to, you know, offer education as well. Um, but I mainly came for the yarn. <laughs> um, yeah, I had to buy some of these. Um, so I had never heard of this yarn before. It's, uh, well... Norwegian. Um, the yarn range is called Solia. Here, Solia. And um, the website is simply called Ull, like U L L, which means wool. Um, but I think the company is called Hillesbeg Ulvarfabrik. You can see it right there. It's a kind of a boat. And then I'll type in the name in the screen, but 
maybe you can see it on the screen as well. Um, I mean on the ball band. Um, yeah, so um, I got five skeins. They are all 100 grams and they were just 11 pounds per 100 grams. So that's around um, 14 euro. So that was a really good value, especially considering that kind of like the standard price at Edinburgh Yarn Fest was around 30 pounds a skein. Um, yeah, <laughs> which was kind of expensive, but I expected that because it's just very luxurious yarn and very prestigious. And anyway, but I was uh, happy to see some reasonably priced yarn as well. Um, so I think I'm gonna make some something color work. Um, yeah, I'm thinking a color work cardigan. Yeah, maybe. I was lucky enough to chat to Emily of uh, Tin Can Knits and she uh, suggested I could use a strange brew pattern. And a strange brew pattern is so ingenious in that you can just design your own yoke. They have a lot of uh, like mix and match color work uh, patterns, kind of like I have for my striped and stranded socks. Um, but then, you know, with all the calculations you need to do for the yoke. So that's amazing. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go for a cardigan. And especially because I want to do my first steek, and I think that will be possible with this yarn because it is very toothy, so it will cling to each other. Um, so I got two skeins of this dusty pink, and this yarn is all dyed on um, uh, the original fleece is gray. So, so that's why the shades are very moody. So I got this one, which is called Rosa uh, 2110. Very pretty. Oh, and they, they also had each of these uh, colorways in a DK weight yarn. I think it was called Tinned. Tinned? Um, yeah, but just look it up on Isola's website. So two of the 2110, one of the Turkish, which is 210, uh, 2106. Uh, I love this one. And then this one is called Stövedrosa. I'm gonna go for a dark pink, I think. Um, 2137. And one of 2118. Nine, which is go, which I'm gonna guess means means gold. So pretty, so pretty. I showed this to Caitlin from Wool Jewel, and she was like gasping <laughs> uh, because this is really Caitlin's color. It really is. If you've seen her, um, uh, her cardigan and lore, it's almost the same color. Caitlin green or Caitlin yellow. Do you call this yellow or green? Probably somewhere in between. Yeah, so these were my lovely purchases at Isolda. Um, and I think, no, I bought one more skein on the first day. The last thing I bought on Thursday was a skein from a not yet known to me French dyer who is called La Fée Fille. And I'm not quite sure what it means. I know Fille means thread. So maybe it's the yarn fairy. I don't know if Fée means fairy, but uh, yeah. And so I love this. And it might be because it looks a lot like peanut butter jelly. <laughs> It does look a lot like that. Yeah, but then add two thirds of the price. Um, so this colorway is actually called Oops. And I'm gonna 
guess that that's kind of their potluck colorway, kind of like a like an accident colorway. Um, so I don't think it's a repeatable one. It's 100% uh, merino superwash, so there's no nylon in here. And actually, out of all the yarn I bought, there is no nylon in there. So I bought all natural yarns, which is great. I um, love that. So yeah, I don't know yet what I'm going to make with this. Um, I'll probably use it in a shawl or in a fingering weight sweater. Yeah. Okay, that was day one. And I have to say I was knackered by the end of, um, well, it wasn't really the end of the day. Um, I think we left at three, two or three. Um, and we were just so, so tired um, from all of the people and all of the yarn and all of the colors and um, just, whew, it was really something. Um, but I think a lot of people experienced this. I mean, a, a lot of knitters will be kind of introverted. So, and while it was amazing to be there at Edinburgh Yarn Fest, it kind of drains a lot of energy for us introverts to, you know, be exposed to so many people and <laughs> and interact so much um, yeah but it was amazing so uh, we went back on the Friday which was my last day at Adam Yarn Fest uh, there were and the fair was still open on Saturday and then there was a separate event on Sunday but my last day was on the Friday um, mainly because I had taken my boyfriend with me and I knew that he couldn't stomach more than two days. Yeah, but he did say he had a really great time and he even bought some yarn and he almost finished his first hat. What? Yeah, more on that on a regular episode of my podcast. <laughs> so day two, um, yes, I went over to Stephen. Stephen West, uh, I was wearing my Enchanted Mesa sweater, which I had cast off for the occasion, but uh, it's not yet finished, actually. I still have to uh, make the sleeves longer, and I will show you on my next podcast. Um, but you can also see some footage of my sweater in my Edinburgh vlog. Um, yeah, so I uh, went over to say hello, and... Uh, as always, he's just so nice, and I'm always amazed that, you know, he's actually so normal. <laughs> um, yeah, he's always so over the top in pictures, and then in real life, he's very, very down to earth. Um, and I had to go see some of his yarn, because he, uh, I think together with Stephen and Penelope, I mean, with the yarn shop, he has come up with a new yarn brand, which is West Wool. And right now they have two yarn lines, which are Bicycle and Tandem. And Tandem is the DK. So a Tandem is a double bike, and DK stands for double knitting. So uh, yeah, that's the thicker version. And uh, this one, Bicycle, is the fingering weight version. Well, kind of fingering weight. It's a little bit, there's a less meterage per 100 grams, so maybe sport weight. Uh, there's 350 meters per 100 grams, so yeah. But uh, this colorway is called Glass, beautiful icy blue. And I was com gonna combine it with uh, a skein of Hey Mama Wolf, which is one of my purchases from the first day, which I just totally forgot. Um, <laughs> um, so this skein by Hey Mama Wolf is what I got on the first day. I also bought a project back with her. Let me just go grab that. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I'll first um, 
continue what I was saying about the yarn. So I got this yarn at Hey Mama Wolf, which is called New Bird. And I was told that it was inspired by, oops, by the Edinburgh logo. Um, it has a lot of colors, which is kind of unusual for Hey Mama Wolf because she usually dyes um, like semi-tonal semi yarns, like one color. Um, but there are so many colors in here and I love it. And I thought that it would pair really nicely with the uh, new yarn um, with the West Wool in a color work pattern. So, and I've been thinking for a long time um, of doing some more striped and stranded patterns. Um, so I don't know if you know my striped and stranded socks, which is a pattern that uses self-striping yarn and a contrasting yarn and it's just really really fun to do color work because you can have so many effects um you know the stripe changes uh color and then you know it looks as if you've used a lot of colors um but you're only using two colors uh, i mean the self-striping yarn and the contrast yarn. I'm not explaining this very well, but <laughs> I um, I want to do some more um, like mix and match color work patterns and I thought these would make a great hat. Um, so I'm not sure which one is going to be the base color and which is going to be the contrast color. Um, I think I do like this one better for the ribbing at least because icy blue tends to wash me out. So I think I'm gonna use this one as the main color and this one as the contrast color, which will be really fun. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Um, and the bag I got at Hey Mama Wolf. So this is uh, a Minook bag. See, Minook. Um, and the fabric is hand dyed by Eula from Hey Mama Wolf. Um, and then the bag is made by Minuk. Um, and it's so well made. It's so well made. And I love, I just love the hand dyed look of the, of this bag. Um, and there are leather straps and it's, it's quite a nice size. So at the moment, my boyfriend is using this bag for his um for his hat i've taken the project out but he's using ginger twist studio yarn for his hat um so those tags are still in air so um there is a big area and then there's one pocket here and uh several pockets here actually so how should I show you this? So, see there's one, two, three small pockets and then one big one here. So yeah, plenty of pockets. And you can close it with the drawstring. Only a little bit though. Um, yeah. And what I like is that it will stand up by itself and you can kind of fold it over so that it's like a yarn bowl, like a basket. And yeah, just really, really handy. And my boyfriend loves using this bag, <laughs> but I will not, uh, I will not let, let him steal it. Um, this one is mine. Yeah, I love this bag. So, um, those are my purchases at Stephen and Penelope and Hey Mama Wolf. Then there was a very special event at Isolda's booth um, because Ocean would be there, Ocean Rose, who is Ocean by the Sea on Instagram. And she is a wonderful hand dyer. And you, you will probably know her she, since she is one of the uh, knitters that has spoken up during the Diverse Knitty um, conversations and she has um, 
she has worked so hard um, to educate others and um, to yeah to educate others about diversity and racism and um, and I appreciate her so much for that and uh, she's as I said she's a wonderful hand dyer um, she dyes yarn with natural ingredients and um, they are uh, so beautiful uh, I especially love her uh, pink and blue yarns and so she um, she was having a was it a truck show well kind of a mini yarn sale at Isolde's booth at 2 p.m. on the Friday and um, I was so happy to be there and I was one of the first people in line I was right behind creative CC <laughs> who by the way is gonna have a podcast CC knits the world so I'm not sure when her first episode is but you know keep your eye out for that so I was uh, right behind uh, CC and Ellie from Skane Deer she was there and um, I was standing in line with some wonderful ladies Katika and India and um, just the most amazing ladies and so we couldn't wait for <laughs> Ocean's Yarn so when um, she had set up a table uh, with a um, piece of cloth um, on top so we couldn't see yet so when she lifted it we were all like oh! <laughs> and it was it was amazing how everyone was so so excited for her yarns and I got myself these two so um, as I said I love the pinks and um, the blues that she had um, so she also had some blue shades, but I love these so much, um, especially since I don't know if um, if you've seen Ocean's Instagram stories, but uh, in her garden she often has a fox uh, as a visitor, and this one, the colorway is called Naughty Fox, which I thought was really funny, and then this one is called Matter Hatter, and Matter is a natural dye root, which gives you this color and um i really like puns so matter hatter was yeah yeah <laughs> these are really fun so this is a bfl masham uh blend it's a dk weight it's single ply and it's beautiful and i especially i especially i can't even say that and i especially love her labels because they are um, you know there are flowers in the label um, which is so cute and um, where does it say oh right here it says I'll relax in a nice warm bath with bubbles <laughs> I think that's just so cute so I got one DK I got one mohair mohair silk lace weight so beautiful I think I might use these together but I'm not sure yet so I'm gonna just hold on to these and listen to them and hear what they want to become but for now they are just being so pretty and um, I love meeting ocean I loved um, just having a little conversation with her and um, yeah. Seriously guys, go over to her Etsy shop um, uh, because she, I think she has an Etsy shop update every, every week, uh, usually on Friday. So go over and check out her yarns because these are stunning. They're out of this world. They, this is so soft, BFL Masham. I, or is it Masham? I don't know, Masham, I think. But yeah, super, super pleased with these. Um, and then my very last thing that I got at Edinburgh Yarn Fest, um, right? Yeah, was actually a gift. And um, I got this in a beautiful bag. Um, and I got this from my friend Iris, 
who is a podcaster from Namibia and um, she's originally Dutch but she lives in Africa now and um, since several years actually I think and uh, she has a podcast too Clogs in Africa and I have a little pen I have one on my sweater as well but here's the pen Clogs in Africa this is her logo uh, so clogs as in, you know, Dutch and yeah. <laughs> um, so this is Iris. You've probably seen her around if you were at EYF. Um, she wore a gorgeous Zweig sweater the first day. And then I don't know what this sweater is called, but she wore this sweater the second day. Um, and she gifted me a skein from Miss Lamont, who is a indie dyer from South Africa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is so, so beautiful. I mean, look. It's a perfect mustard. Uh, like a sage green, uh, sage... Um, minty green and with pink speckles, petrol speckles, it's just so beautiful. It is um, single ply, 100% merino, 100% superwash merino. And yeah, I'm just so happy with this. Thank you so much, Iris. It was so, so kind. Yeah, thank you so much. So I have no idea what I'm going to make with this yet. So I'm just going to have to wait and see until the right project comes along. But um, it's so stunning. So I think this would be beautiful for a contrast yoke as well. Or a shawl. I think this would be beautiful as a lace shawl. Yay! Those were my EYF purchases. And then um, on the Sunday, we went back into Edinburgh, to the city, and of course we had to visit a yarn store. So we visited a Ginger Twist studio where uh, my boyfriend had bought some yarn um, on Thursday as well at their booth because they were, all, uh, they were also on Edinburgh Yarn Fest. Uh, but he didn't buy enough. Um, he was already making a lot of progress on his hat, um, but he didn't buy enough, so we went, we went back. Oh, such a shame, we had to go back to the yarn store um, on Sunday, and I got some lovely yarn. Um, I bought some from my for my mom as well. Uh, it was a lovely mustardy, mustardy green, kind of like this one. And I got some skeins for myself as well. I love these so much. Yeah, um, blue used to be my favorite color. Now it's pink, but <laughs> I still cannot resist a good blue. And I love her label. So uh, Ginger Twist Studio. Um, I think it's called Ginger Twist because um, the owner is a redhead, um, but um, she adopted a cat after she opened the studio and the cat was called Ginger as well, so that was just like huge coincidence. Um, yeah, so I got these two hand dyed skeins from her. They are on her Masham Mayhem 4-ply. And it is 75% British Blueface Luster and 25% British Masham. So it's really a British yarn, uh, hand dyed in Edinburgh. Uh, this one is called Voyager and this one is called It Might As Well Be Spring. Love that. And they're both for ply and I was thinking to make a shawl with this I, and I know I've said that like three times so um, I'm planning a lot of shawls I think um, because they just go so nicely together and it would be nice to have this as the main color and then this as kind of a 
lacy edging. You know what I mean? So pretty. Um, but it might be something else as well. These would be great for mittens. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. So I got those and I got a set of buttons. And these are made in South Africa. And um, I have bought these buttons before at a Dutch craft fair from the same, um, the same producer. So producer, do you say that? From the same brand? Same brand. Yeah, so they have a website, buttonmad.com. Um, let's see, handmade, fully washable, giving employment to women in South Africa. Oh, they're called incomparable buttons. Yeah, so these were so cute. And um, I think I might use them on my cardigan. Might be nice. Might be, or maybe on a plain colored cardigan. Yeah, so cute. And then the last thing, got a pom-pom. I wanted to buy this pom-pom for such a long time. Uh, well, it hasn't been out that long, but um, ever since it came out. Uh, so this is pom-pom quarterly issue 28. It's spring 2019. Uh, it's so pretty. So it's the botanical issue and it has a lot of bot botanical inspired patterns. Um, for example, this one. I love this one. If this one is crochet. Yeah, but this one is just oh, looks so nice. Imagine going on holiday and wearing this at the beach or when you go shopping on holiday. Uh, it just has this summery vibe, you know, so pretty. I think I might not do the fringe because then it becomes really wearable for everyday wear as well. And then there's this beautiful sweater, which is Adiantum. Let's see, yes, Adiantum. And, oh right, yes, the water clover top. So this is another crochet top. Love this. Absolutely love this. It's so pretty. Yeah. It's just it's so many beautiful patterns in here. Yes. So pretty. Yeah, I love supporting Pom Pom. They are such a great publication and um, I love that they have like other things than patterns as well. Um, there is a um, gin recipe and a lotion bar recipe, I thought. Where is a lotion bar? Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So, um, yeah, I think I might make the hat. Um, I didn't show you the hat, didn't I? Oh, I'm so impractical. There it is. Sweet fern. So cute. Love that. So, what do you think? That might work. That might work, yeah. Mm, okay, we'll see. Well, I think that was all. So let's see. Ocean's Yarn, West Wool, Hey Mama Wolf, Ginger Twist, Solia Yarn from Isolde, And 
then the French Dyers, La Fée and La bien -Aimée. I think this is all. <laughs> all the yarn. Not counting the bags and the books. This is all the yarn. <laughs> oh, but I'm not going to feel bad about it because I, because I am going to use it and probably most of it for patterns, uh, for uh, my own patterns. So that's work related expense, right? Yeah. And I am especially happy with my needle case from um, Erica Eccles. This is, yeah, this is probably going to be the most used thing that I bought during Adam Iron Fest. Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to go because I think this video will be long enough. Um, yeah. Keep your eyes peeled for my next podcast episode. And also I will be visiting a Dutch craft fair next week, which is knit and knot. Um, so I'll probably buy some more yarn there. <laughs> But I also be attending two workshops, which is really fun. And um, yeah, since I didn't get into any of the workshops at Edinburgh Yarn Fest, but seriously, Edinburgh Yarn Fest, they have done such a great job. Um, it was hands down the best organized craft fair that I have ever been to, uh, especially with all of these side events. Um, it's just it's just become a destination travel so um <sighs> momo is like <laughs> mowing really hard um so with all of the side events it really becomes worth it for knitters to travel a whole lot um to the festival which other craft fairs not really um yeah so i think other craft fairs can certainly learn from adam riarn fest um it's just so, so great. Yeah. I think I'll be going again next time. Momo! Okay, I'm gonna leave you guys. Thank you all so much for watching and a special thank you to all of my patrons who make it sustainable for me to have this YouTube channel. Um, so special thank you to them. Um, I hope you have a very crafty time and until I see you next, bye-bye!